In this video, we'll take a look at omics data analysis in Pathway Tools. We invoke omics data analysis through the omics viewer menu, and we're going to read our data from text, a text file. We use this data, this dialog to import the text file. This is the file we'll read from, and the data file is a tab delimited file containing gene names and identifiers in the first column, and RNA-seq counts in the remaining columns. And we use this dialog to specify that we're going to use mul multiple columns from this data file. First column is the identifier. Columns 1 through 6 contain the data. We're going to tell it to launch uh, all five of our omics data analysis tools. We're going to use a user-defined color scale right here. The first tool we'll look at is called the Omics Dashboard. The dashboard is divided into several panels. There's a panel for biosynthesis, for degradation, for energy metabolism, for central dogma processes, other cellular processes, and a few other panels as well. Each panel is divided up into several plots. There's a biosynthesis plot for amino acid biosynthesis, nucleotide biosynthesis, etc. Now, the, the data set that we're looking at is an, a data set in which E. coli transcriptomics data are gathered at six different time points, hence the six different colored bars here, during the shift from anaerobic to aerobic growth. And what the tool is doing is plotting for the six different time points expression levels for all the genes in amino acid biosynthetic pathways in this plot and all the genes for nucleotide biosynthesis pathways in this plot. And the fat dots are the averages of all the genes at one time point. So by letting your eye follow the fat dots, you can see the overall response of that area of cellular metabolism. So for example, we, we can see that amine biosynthesis is going up, carbohydrate biosynthesis is going down during this transition, glycolysis is going down, TCA cycle is being upregulated. If we want to see more details about the response of any particular system, we can click on it. And then we get a similar plot for, in this case, every amino acid biosynthetic pathway. So we can see that alanine biosynthesis is going up, as is arginine biosynthesis, as is methionine biosynthesis. If, and, and once again, we're using exactly the same format where individual genes are plotted along each vertical bar for each time point and the fat dots are the averages. If we want to see more detail about methionine biosynthesis, we can click here and now we see the expression levels of all the genes involved in methionine biosynthesis. We can also see, all, see the operon organization of all genes involved in methionine biosynthesis. We can also see the behavior of all the regulators that control the genes in this pathway. We're now going to look at the next omics data analysis tool, which is painting omics data onto the cellular overview metabolic map diagram for E. coli. Okay, here we see the E. coli metabolic map diagram painted with this omics data set, and this diagram is animated so that we, we can change the painting over each of the time points of the data set. Now, one thing you may be noticing is that this color scheme is not optimal for this particular data set. Um, so what we're going to do is to drag the, the color bar scale downwards so that we can expand the, the range of the color set. And now we're seeing a lot more information. Um, now we can start and stop the animation or step it forward manually. And when we do so, we can, we can zoom in on, say, the TCA cycle to see more details of what's happening in different areas of the TCA cycle, for example. We can also interrogate other aspects of the diagram. So for example, we can ask, uh, what is this? This is the glycine cleavage pathway. Uh, we can create what, what are called omics pop-ups that show, that, that plot the expression levels of the different genes in this pathway. Uh, here's another highly expressed uh, pathway. That's the ISCS gene. And we can also change the color scheme to a 
totally different set of colors and change the uh, color scale again. Um, we, we can also show an individual pathway and the omics data will be shown using these omics pop-ups, which let us see that very clearly that some enzymes in the TCA cycle are not changing their expression very much at all, whereas other enzymes are changing quite significantly. This tool is called the Pathway Collage, and it lets us arrange multiple pathways on the screen to personalize the pathway diagram. So for example, we can rearrange uh, these pathways like so to try to accentuate the, the fact that um, this pathway synthesizes serine, these two pathways consume serine, so we can add these connections like so, we can overlay expression data, we can add omics data to the diagram, in this case in the form of heat maps. Another tool is the genome overview, which paints the same omics data set onto the E. coli genome map. In, in this view, uh, each little shark fin is one E. coli gene, so we can easily see the operon layout of gene expression data. It's a different biological view of the data, and like with the other tools, we can play the animation forward to see uh, how expression levels change during the six time points in, in this data set. Another tool is the regulatory overview diagram, which in this case highlights the same gene expression data set onto a regulatory network viewer for E. coli. And I can click on a gene to highlight all the genes that it regulates. And so this diagram lets us compare the, the behaviors of individual regulators with the behavior of the genes they regulate and we can mouse over genes here to, to find out what they are. Now in this tool, we're gonna to show a table of pathways ordered by what we call their differential pathway perturbation score. So in the, the columns in this table are the pathway name, the pathway diagram with omics data overlaid, the differential pathway perturbation score, and the pathway perturbation score plotted over time. Now the pathway perturbation score is a measure of the activation level of a pathway at different time points in this data set. And so what we're doing is to sort the pathways uh, according to their activation levels with most highly activated pathways at the top. And the pathway activation level is computed by as the sum of the squares of the reaction activation levels, which are computed from the expression data associated with each enzyme associated with these reactions. And so this lets us see um, which pathways are, are most perturbed in this particular experiment.